Hi everyone, my name is Michelle and I'm going to show you how to track profits for each customer. In order to do this, you have to have your expense tracking turned on. So we'd go up here to the gear icon and then go to account and settings and then go to expenses. And right here it says track expenses and items by customer. I want to turn that on. So I'd click on this pencil icon check that box. I'm also going to go ahead and check this box, make expenses and items billable. That would allow me to bill a customer for any expenses that are billable. So what I want to do is show you a report that's really useful for seeing the profits per customer and it's called profit and loss by customer. And as you can see here, there's a column for each customer that this business has. And if you scroll all the way across, you can see all the different customers. There's several different income accounts. So they're all over here on the left and the company's using all these different categories. Um, and then they have several different expenses but you can see the expense area is pretty blank because they're not really tracking a whole lot of expenses per customer. If you scroll all the way to the right, there's this column called not specified. And these are items that are not assigned to a specific customer. So I could click on any of these items and get a breakdown of what those items are. And I could actually click on them if I wanted to and add the job information or the customer information. Okay, so I'm going to just open one of these up. In this column for Red Rock Diner, there's an expense of $88.09. And you can see over here on the right hand side in the customer column, they just chose Red Rock Diner right here. So it's really easy to do this. All you have to do when you're writing a check or entering an expense is add the customer name over here on the right hand side. Um, so I'm going to walk you through the whole process with a customer that's already in here. So if I go to sales, then customers, I'm going to use this one called Amy's Bird Sanctuary. And you can see that they already have several invoices and payments listed here. And what I'm going to do is add an expense. So I'm going to assume they went to Home Depot and it was for an equipment rental for $100. And over here on the right, I'm going to put Amy's Bird Sanctuary and I'm going to save and close this. Um, so you see it's not listed here. The expense is not going to be listed here unless I mark it as billable. But if we go back to the report, you can see the expense right here in Amy's Bird Sanctuary in that column. So they had income of $630 minus the $100 expense. And that brings the net income at this moment down to $530. Um, so I'm going to go back into that expense and show you one more thing. So I'm just at, acting like I'm adding a new expense, but I'm going to click on this recent transaction icon up here. And here's the expense. I'm going to go back to it. And right here where it says billable, I'm going to check this box. And actually, I need to go back into that expense and show you one more thing. Um, a lot of companies like to have a separate account for this. Um, some companies call it reimbursed expenses. Some companies call it advanced costs or advanced client costs. I'm just going to go ahead and add a new account. Um, some companies like to add it as a receivable. 
Some companies like to add it as an expense, and some companies like to add it as a cost of goods sold account, which is also an expense. So I've seen it all three different ways. If you're not sure, you could always just ask the person who does your taxes or who's setting up your account as to what they would recommend. So I'm going to save and close this. And that didn't change anything here. Um, I'm going to go back to the sales and go to the customer. And now we've got a billable expense charge for $100 here, and it's open. They also have a time charge for $375 that's open. And I'm just going to go ahead and click on that and show you. Um, their employee named John Johnson worked for five hours on design work for this customer, and they're going to bill the customer at $75 an hour. So I'm going to go ahead and create an invoice for that. Since the time activity was already there, I'm just going to go ahead and add it in. And then I'm going to also add in that $100 equipment rental. Now, what you see here is there's nothing over here in the product and service. It does not bring in the expense because this is on the sale side. This is selling it or getting the money from the customer. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new product or service here. So what's going to happen is it was expensed when we entered the Home Depot expense. But now when we get the money back from the customer, we're going to treat it as an income. So the income is going to be offset with the expense and the net effect to the company is going to be zero. So it's going to be using, we're going to use an income account for this. And whenever you change this here, it deletes the $100 over here. So I have to re-enter that. And then I'm also going to go ahead and add in a description. So now they have a billable expense charge that's closed. The time charge is now closed. And they have an open invoice for $475. So I'm going to go back to that report so I can show you what that looks like now. So now they have $375 here under design income that wasn't there before, and then the $100 under services. So their income went up, and the expense is still down here. So the $100 income is going to be offset with the $100 expense. And all I did was create an invoice I have not actually shown a receipt of payment from the customer yet. So if I were to change this to cash basis, since we haven't actually received the cash, the design income and the $100 service is going to be blank. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, you can comment below. If you need any accounting services, you can contact me. My website is CoastalCarolinaAccounting.com. Have a great day.